People must think they're seeing double in Papua New Guinea. The country now has two prime ministers, two cabinets, two governor generals and two police commissioners. And there's no prospect in sight of breaking the political deadlock that was sparked by the Supreme Court ruling that Sir Michael Samari was the rightful prime minister, not Peter O'Neill, who took over power earlier this year when Sir Michael was overseas. On the line is PNG correspondent Liam Fox, who's at Parliament House in Port Moresby. Uh, so, Liam, is there any sign of this situation being resolved? No, there isn't at the moment. Uh, as we saw yesterday, uh, the Governor-General swore in Sir Michael Samari's cabinet in the morning. Then in the afternoon, we saw Peter O'Neill, who's been maintaining a presence in uh, Parliament House all week. Uh, his government sacked the Governor-General and appointed uh, the Speaker, Geoffrey Nape, to be the acting Governor-General. And he then proceeded to swear in uh, Peter O'Neill as the Prime Minister and then swear in his cabinet. Uh, and as of this morning, there's been no word from either of the two men, though we're expecting them to hold press conferences shortly. Um, but there has been some attempt at a breakthrough. We've uh, just been to a meeting uh, of a gathering of uh, church leaders from several denominations. They're appealing to uh, the Christians in the country and to the political leaders to put uh, their differences aside and to form a government of national unity. Uh, the church leaders are offering to facilitate that meeting. And as one, uh, one of the leaders put it, uh, the best Christmas present for Papua New Guinea would be peace and goodwill. Now, Liam, what do the people of PNG think about this situation? I think mostly people are bewildered. Uh, initially, there was a lot of disappointment at the prospect of Sir Michael coming back into power. Uh, his uh, government was not so popular in August when he was removed from office and there was a lot of enthusiasm for Peter O'Neill as the new Prime Minister. I think that feeling has now changed to, as I said, one of bewilderment and why can't these people sort out this situation so we can go on with our lives. And we've also been told by some uh, civil society groups that they may be holding protests around Parliament House today. Now, there are elections next year. Do you think the deadlock could last until then? Briefly, Liam. Look, it's, it's too hard to say. Uh, it could last till then. Uh, also, in, in, in other pros, uh, prospect is that uh, they'll sort it out the Melanesian way, which was despite their differences, they'll come together, call each other brothers, and uh, perhaps form this national government of national unity that the church leaders are talking about. Liam, thank you.